Let me get Raquel in here. Um, and I want to move to body shaming. Um, mm -hmm. is, it le is it a legit argument mm -hmm. or an excuse for us to continue to put our health on a back burner? Raquel. So, I mean, when it comes to that body shaming, I guess you can look at it in a couple ways. Um, and so I was kind of trying to figure out exactly what you were thinking when you were talking about the body shaming. So do you mean like big people um, shaming smaller people? For you can say fat. Smaller? You can say fat. So, so, <laughs> so let's, let's look at the artist um, um, Lizzo, who Lizzo. is, um, you know, she's, she's, she's healthy looking. You know, she's thick, right? I don't really mm -hmm. call her obese, but in, 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 in I guess the standard health standard chart, she's yeah. obese, right? <laughs> If you're and 10 pounds well, over, I was going to say, most people uh, are, according to yeah, that part. According to that, <laughs> right, yeah. right. It's not the best yeah. way to thing to yeah. use. Right. Yeah. But when, and, and when she first came out, because um, <coughs> the industry has been so um, set upon you looking a certain way, um, mm -hmm. weighing a certain amount, having a certain complexion. So people were, you know, were coming at her. And, and you know, so this new thing came out. Oh, you're, you're body shaming me because I'm overweight. I sh you shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't talk about that. It shouldn't make people feel bad. You know, you, you have your comedians with the fat jokes. They kind of, you know, calm down on that. So, but I, I've, you know, are we leaning more towards using that as an excuse to continue on, you know, just being, you know, irresponsible how we're taking care of ourselves? Or, you know, is it really, you know, about not being bullied or being f made to feel yeah. bad? Yeah, I definitely think it shifts more into a mindset thing. You know, it's um, it's a protection mechanism. You know, people, I think part of that shaming is what causes people to stay the way they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it causes people to eat in the closet because it's like, I'm just going to go over here and do this and I'm not going to say it to anybody. It causes people to not like their bodies. And I think we definitely, especially in the Black community, have to get away from this shaming um, it's not about whether or not shaming is um, saying that it's okay because it's not, but it also doesn't help people to make a change. You know, I know I'm sure if you talked earlier about willpower and when it comes to habit change and making different changes, it really is about a mindset. Like when we're talking about wellness, there's so many different areas of wellness. And a lot of times we always um, hone in and pinpoint your weight or your diet, but there's so many other areas that are connected to that. And part of that is the social aspect of it. Um, you know, what are people saying to you? If, if somebody keeps telling me that my body um, doesn't look right, then one of two things is gonna happen. Either one, I'm going to starve myself so that I can fit into the mold, or two, I'm going to step up to it and say, no, this is who I am, and I'm going to defend that. Um, and I, I think we really do have to get away from doing that to people, especially as we're trying to teach our children to be better at making healthier choices, because it really isn't about like there's so many different sizes of people. Everybody's different sizes. There are people who could be eating right and doing all the right things and they don't look like a size two, which is what the you know media might say is what's healthy, you know, and so there's people who are like severely underweight. You know, so just because they're small doesn't make them any healthier than someone who might have a thicker body, um, you know, um, size. So I think we really have to be careful about that shaming and make sure that we're just giving people the education and the proper tools that they need to make these changes so that they um, can actually do that. And especially, I know I said this before, but in our community, because we already have such a big stigma when it comes to, um, as it relates to health wellness as it relates to mental health all of those things so we really have to come into a space where it feels more comforting and not non-judgmental and that's where people make their changes when they feel comfortable making it not just because somebody shamed them into making that decision all right i'm all for body shaming mm -hmm. um, and the reason why i say that is because i like you know, when I was growing up, what do y'all call me? Y'all call me Big Reef. Big Back Reef. in the day when I was in high school, mm -hmm. I was called Big Wayne. So for it depends on the uh, uh, situation. It depends on the person. It depends on, you know, even sometimes male or female. Now, I'm not saying that it's, like I said, I'm for body shaming. The reason why, because y'all know me, I went through my journey and I understood what it takes. Um, I think that um, it is a mindset. I think it's also a social aspect. But I also think, you know, you just have to be, and I guess we have, you have to get to that point, and, and Lorraine was saying it, um, not Miss Lorraine, but just Lorraine. She was saying it, that you have to, it's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I think for me, 
I got to a point at a young age was like, yo, I'm just going to be fat. Biggie Smalls was fat. I'm fat. I'm going to try to get the chicks and do that type of thing. Whereas, you know, at my later point in life, I realized that, you know, it was, I, it was, it was affecting my health. So I think that once you get to a point and realize that it affects your health, then um, you decide to make the change. But I think, you know, b- body shaming sometimes can be used as a motivation. Lorraine, I want to go to you because you, you work with uh, our adolescents and you work in a mental health field. Do you do you think that I'm, I'm do you I'm going to ask you this? Do you find that self image issue coming up a lot with adolescents? And do you think you know this body shaming is sending a mixed message? Yeah, I think that um, one we always equate size with health, and I think mm-hmm. Raquel just said it right. Mm-hmm. You can have a person that might be a little heavier, and they can walk those steps and stuff and get it in, and they're doing whatever. And then someone who's small um, and they breathe in and, mm. you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, but I think that when we talk about being healthy and we talk about body shaming, there's a couple of things that happen, right? So you brought up Lizzo or even, you know, folks that I know who struggle with their weight. Sometimes it's not about even having poor um eating habits or things like that they have thyroid issue or they have health issues that are you know presenting to weight right Mm -hmm. but when we talk about people who are struggling with how they eat and eating healthy i think that when um we and that's where i bring mental health part our emotional and our mental health piece in right Mm -hmm. so i think that you can that and this is just just keeping it real There are some folks because we've gotten to this point where we're very sensitive with everything, right? And so if we're really trying to talk about health, being healthy, not so much weight size, like you need to be a zero or a two or a four, but being healthy, I think that's a good conversation to have. Um, But we're in this stage where everyone's real sensitive. And so it's like, oh, okay, so you want to talk about my health, your body shaming. Mm-hmm. And not that's not always necessarily the truth either. It's kind of like what we did with kids. Everybody makes a team. Everybody uh, knows this, and then they don't. We don't know how to manage um, ourselves accordingly. Um, you asked the question with the young folks that I meet about you know their self image. It's not only the adolescents I work with. Mm-hmm. I work with older men and women in my practice who have some of the same issues. And I think it's about how we're socialized around food Mm -hmm. and weight and all those things, right? So if things Mm -hmm. bother us, for some of us, food is a a place where we go. Exactly. Sometimes if we're feeling depressed, some of us don't eat. And then you have, you know, that problem. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're in this place where health is a definite problem right? I think that we um, equate size and health together too much um, because sometimes it, it's just not the case. It's not always a, a, a they're doing something negative in regards to eating. And I think we're in this place of we don't know how to have conversations without mm-hmm. being, we get so sensitive. Even if you say someone's skinny, I used to feel some type of way when someone, you yeah. know, if I meet a Spanish person, they're like, Marga, <laughs> I meet, uh, or Flaca, you know, I mean, all this, and all that means skinny. Are you skinny? I was like, skinny. I wanted to gain weight so bad. Now that I gain weight, I'm like, oh my God, how do I lose it? And I'm, <laughs> I'm getting to this other side, right? And so, um, yeah, I just think that it's all about us being able to come in places like this and just start having the conversation because we are, some of us, many of us are in a very, um, we're not healthy and we're not making the right choices. And just because someone brings it to your attention doesn't necessarily mean we're always trying to body shame. And I think it it can be a way to deflect what's really going on. 